Okay, so uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Chaturangi Shalika, and uh, my senior is Ruan Vikramaraj. He is not here at this moment. Uh, so we are going to in, uh, start this, our session on AI in manufacturing. So you all visited the manufacturing factory today. So what are your ideas on it? What do you think? Have you have any one of you have visited a factory like that before? Yeah. Yes. Uh, where? Are? I've seen some in like Michigan factories, some in Electron factories, and many more. In South Carolina? Yes, yeah, South Carolina. Where is South Yeah. I've been to Ah, uh, yeah. 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 Well, the, the important thing is that um, when you, um, uh, you look, if you think about this factory, there is a huge amount of data collection that can happen, right? Uh, you saw the cameras, uh, you saw infrared, uh, there are infrared collectors. Uh, you would have um, sensors in the grip uh, of the uh, right there. You will have uh, camera uh, infrared to uh, get the temperature of the arm of the robot in case it is heating up. Uh, you would have uh, a video a camera right in the a gripper so that it looks at exactly the part that you are uh, looking at. Now, uh, as I was telling there, um, if you want to make manufacturing using robots flexible, then you have to uh, use AI to process the data. You have to collect the data and understand, right? So the computer vision part is that you're looking at, a, you know, image and uh, analyzing what is what what the image has. With that comes ability to say what that part looks like, exactly where lo lo what location it has, what is the orientation, what is the part is, uh, you know, uh, turned. Uh, then the gripper won't work in some cases. It depends on uh, you know the design of the gripper. Um, or that there is a, um, suddenly the robot has stopped working uh, because it encountered something unusual. Um, all of those decision making. Uh, so once I, I'll give you one very interesting example. I was making a product uh, called workflow product. It was basically a business process automation. The amount of code that I wrote for things going right was one tenth of the amount of code I wrote, wrote for things going wrong. So many things could go wrong in the real world, right? And um, uh, you can't uh, plan for all of them. That means you got to have what we call a situational awareness. You got to know what's happening at that point of time. And uh, without real-time data and its processing, you are very, you know, what you have is very rigid. So it could go pretty wrong, right? So I think this is the key. Um, uh, aspect where AI is making, you know, making uh, manufacturing uh, flexible, adaptive, and it reduces downtime and many other things. And of course, uh, Chaturangi will talk a lot more about it. Yeah, so this is the outline of the session. Uh, we'll uh, talk about what is manufacturing and uh, this has some demos to show you and 
uh, the what's the status of manufacturing in our state and what happened in the manufacturing all over the years in the past years and what are the problems in manufacturing and why AI came into manufacturing and how it was built and what are the key technologies and the benefits will go uh, in our session now. So what is manufacturing? What do you guys think? Yeah, of course. Uh, it's the it's really the production of the things that we need everyday life. Yeah, and if we take a definition, then it's the production of goods that involves using equipment, labor, machines, and tools, and then it involves a chemical or any biological processing or formulation. So the industry lies uh, automotive, electronics, uh, food processing. They are all industries, and the manufacturing industries. So let's uh, go through a cool video of uh, what's happening inside a manufacturing company. One yeah. of the things uh, really worth thinking about is that on the main assembly uh, floor, how many people did you see? Um, in earlier days, uh, you know, um, when I came to US in 1981, um, you know, there were, you know, I one of the person I met was uh, somebody who had worked uh, for many years uh, at GM uh, for uh, you know car assembly, um, and uh, there were lots of jobs. Those jobs are gone, uh, you know, sitting, you know, doing there and doing some manual work. But they were replaced by, you saw the people there? Mm -hmm. the, uh, those people were all, all, are all highly paid. 
Uh, they are not, um, you know, people who are doing, um, uh, you know, primarily uh, manual job uh, and, and taking the part here and drilling it and all this stuff. They are operating machines or something along that line. Thereby, the, you know, um, increasingly, um, uh, the jobs are ones where, uh, you know, they, they are for those who are really highly paid and uh, training with the computer science or uh, other aspects of it. These robots, all the robots have a lot of AI built into them. Uh, and that is a very key thing, where, you know, that we can keep in mind that as you go uh, for your generation, uh, jobs are increasingly going to demand more, uh, you know, abilities, technical abilities. Yeah, and in this video, you saw that the process starts from raw materials and it involved a sequential process uh, that, as Dr. Sheth mentioned, many people involved and many machineries, many robots involved uh, to make the end product, the, the assembly car. Yeah, so uh, now let's go through the views of manufacturing. Uh, so technically speaking, the manufacturing has two views, either technological or economical. You also maybe have uh, learned on this in your, uh, if you are doing commerce or history, you may have know, already known this. So the technological view says that manufacturing is the application of physical or either chemical processes to change the geometry uh, properties and appearance of a start material to make a good end product. So as in this figure, the process of manufacturing start with a raw material. It may be either metal or rubber, and it involves uh, uh, machinery, tooling, power, labor in the manufacturing process to convert the raw materials into a processed part. And also in every manufacturing uh, company, it involves scrap and waste materials. So the economic view says that the manufacturing is transformation of raw materials into items of greater value. So starting uh, as shown in the figure, manufacturing is starting from a raw material and it involves some processing and the end product is more value added to the raw materials. So for example, if we take materials like metal, rubber, they uh, don't have a value in their product it, in their materials itself. But what if we can convert those materials into a good end product, then we can earn money uh, from those end product. So let's talk, what's the state of manufacturing in South Carolina? So as some of you guys have already visited, there are many manufacturing companies in South Carolina. And so South Carolina has a very strong manufacturing base uh, with industry like uh, automotive, uh, rubber, metal, uh, machinery, plastic being prominent. So manufacturing is the industry in South Carolina, which has the highest contributor for both the GDP and the employment in our state. So the manufacturing uh, companies provide lots of employment opportunities for thousands of residents in our state. So what are the reasons that contribute to this development in South Carolina? Actually, the, the strategic location of our state can be a good uh, reason behind this achievement uh, because we have access to many ports and uh, major highways. So our state has become a major attraction among the manufacturing companies. So as shown in the uh, bottom right figure, among the industries, major industries like manufacturing, real estate, healthcare, and retail, manufacturing has the uh, its apparel manufacturing has the highest contributor for both the GDP and the employment. So you guys have a very uh, strong opportunity to pursue your uh, occupation in manufacturing industry. And these are some of the stats that I have found. So in South Carolina, 30% uh, of jobs are tied to manufacturing and it's the highest, uh, higher, 33% of higher annual wage than South Carolina average is from manufacturing. And also one interesting factor is 
uh, for every 10 of the manufacturing jobs created in the industry, another 14 jobs are created elsewhere in South Carolina. So isn't it interesting? Yeah, of course. And uh, these are some of the stats uh, on respect to the industries that I found. So the major industries are of transportation equipment and then chemicals, machinery, and metal, as I uh, said earlier. So uh, what are the manufacturing companies in South Carolina? So you already mentioned like Nephron, Boeing, and else you guys know? Sure. Yeah. What else? Yeah, like companies like uh, BMW, Volvo, Bosch. And this is an example of uh, assembly at the BMW Spartanburg in South Carolina. And uh, Ruan is here. So he's also a contributor of this. If you have any questions, you can ask him also. And then uh, let's go towards the industrial evolution. So this industrial revolution state, how manufacturing was evolved over past decades. So you may also have known about these things in your history and economics book, have you? Okay. Uh, the first industrial revolution actually started in the 18th century. Uh, the main power was the steam engine and then a mass production of machines that means a great evolution in the mechanization of products happened in the uh, first industrial revolution. And then uh, before the industrial revolutions, actually people made everything by hand and the life was very difficult at that time for the industrial revolution actually helped people reduce the uh, efforts in their day-to-day -day lives. And the life was much easier when the industrial revolutions was happening. And then the second industrial revolution happened with the invention of the electricity in the uh, early uh, nine, the 20th century. And then um, the assembly lines was uh, introduced in the second revolution. And then one of the major uh, achievement in the second revolution was the division of labor in factories, that means uh, in each factory, there were respective people to do every task and there were machineries that do some tasks. So uh, the labor was divided equally about in the machines or the people. And then the third industrial revolution was happened in the late 20th century with the uh, involvement of IT systems and automation systems. and so at this time, actually, a uh, huge uh, development in the manufacturing companies was taken place. And uh, there were many demand for manufacturing companies and the factories, which led to a high uh, development needs in these factories. And then actually in this stage of the, in 1970s, that means the last decades, uh, so, uh, there were many problems in the manufacturing companies. Likewise, uh, there were many disruptions in the com in the assembly lines, and there were the the manufacturing companies were not able to uh, monitor the issues in the production lines, and there were many control issues and production costs and workforce challenges. So, the owners of the manufacturing companies there were trying how to solve the problems in these uh, companies. So at that time, actually, they were researching on using AI technologies and other highly advanced technologies into manufacturing. So that was the need where AI needs to come into the manufacturing processes. So what happened in using AI in manufacturing? Actually, it in, uh, the aim was to increase the efficiency and the 
productivity and the decision making capabilities of the overall manufacturing processes. So some examples of using AI in manufacturing are robotics, quality control, uh, the maintenance, automation and supply chain. So uh, what happened in using AI in manufacturing? Uh, the, so the companies, uh, the main aim was to uh, simulate human intelligence and perform tasks that require human intelligence within machineries. So that task that involved uh, learning, reasoning and problem solving was some examples. So in the beginning of the 21st century, the fourth industrial revolution was taken place with mass digitization and the invention of cyber physical social systems. And the techniques like IoT, networking and machine learning were uh, introduced into manufacturing processes. And then in 2020, the fifth industrial revolution was taken place with the invention of uh, cyber physical cognitive systems and green manufacturing like uh, things. And one of the main important thing happened in the industry 5.0 or the fifth industrial revolution was uh, the, actually in that era, the people and the machines were trying to collaborate each other. So it was a major achievement because in the previous uh, eras, only machines worked to themselves, but not by the involvement of humans. So, but in the fifth industrial revolution, uh, it was more focused on uh, delivering individual tailored customer experience. That means the machines, they produce uh, customized products. That means the, the uh, end product that it produced for me is not the same for you. That means you guys can make customized uh, solutions with your interest and so on. Okay, uh, so this is just a slide that explained a comparison between these uh, two industrial, that means industry 4.0 and 5.0. Uh, so industry 4.0, it focused uh, more on connecting machines, but the 5.0, it focused on delivering more customer experience. And yeah, in industry 4.0, the mass customization of products was happened, but in 5.0, a hyper customization, that means each individual product would be unique to its intended customer and will be manufactured accordingly. And uh, industry 4.0, it had uh, intelligent supply chain, and but 5.0, it had more responsive and more distributed supply chain. Likewise. And this is a simple question that uh, you guys can answer. Uh, what is the unique characteristics of the fifth industrial revolution? What do you guys think? See. Yeah, the answer is C, uh, the fifth industrial revolution, it was more focused on personalized human machine collaboration and coexistence. Yeah, uh, so now let's go uh, the AI in manufacturing at USC. So you guys visited the McNair Center today. So this is a, uh, some uh, pictures of that that you have all already have seen so with this magna center actually we have been working collaboratively on several projects on using on how we can use ai in manufacturing processes like uh, we have been working on uh, projects like event understanding and causality and planning like things So uh, this is the project that uh, I've been working on. The project is the rare event prediction in manufacturing. So what are these rare events that we are dealing with? So rare events are the occurrences that play, uh, taken place with a very low probability than more common events like 
uh, examples like paper breaks, component failures can be taken. So these events are very costly for industries and the resumption time is higher. So in today's morning also, you saw that our the, the rocket assembly process, it didn't work, right? So those guys were working so hardly on how to resume it and how to make it work. So you guys knew that it took much time and very a huge human effort. So happening of these uh, events are very costly for industries. And so the time taken from these, uh, time taken for these failures is very high. And then the demand and the supply uh, would not be able to balance if these kind of occurrences are being happened in the industries, right? So the project objective is that predicting, uh, we, we are trying to predict, predict such rare events in advance by using AI technologies. Yeah, Ruan, if you have any ideas, you can also collaborate. Yeah, okay. And so this is some example use case that uh, we were researched in while doing our research. It's like a rare event prediction in a paper manufacturing industry. So this image is taken from that. And also when talking about the key AI technologies in manufacturing, we can take as uh, machine learning, uh, robotics, computer vision, and NLP. So uh, if you guys remember, uh, Deepa on Monday also explained some of these key technologies and how they are applicable in industries. So you guys also got to know today that uh, those uh, Magna Center, they are dealing with some uh, anomaly detection and defect identification like techniques, right? Yeah, this is uh, another uh, cool video I found on uh, autonomous factory. Uh, this is a, a visionary video developed by Siemens. It's very interesting, but this would be the real future. Our world is full of exciting ideas. Imagine every idea could be realized as an individual product in the future. We at Siemens advance industrial automation beyond imagination to make this happen. Before production can start, the order is analyzed to derive the materials and the processes needed to do the job. We also choose the most appropriate factory for the order in terms of available capabilities, supply chain aspects, and the best climate footprint. We envision that companies strive to produce only what is really requested, to be more economical, and to save valuable resources. After analyzing the priority of the unloading process, intelligent algorithms allocate suitable resources based on their offered skill set and availability. Huge amounts of data need to be analyzed in the production process, like the video stream of a drone that identifies the position of the supplied materials and checks the delivery for completeness and damage, all at the same time. However, not all tasks can be solved fully automatically. Human expertise and intuition are still crucial to make critical decisions in the autonomous factory. Intelligent systems are connected, exchange information, and collaborate to complete tasks quickly and efficiently. Tasks such as triggering material transportation, with the scanned information, the autonomous units know what to do and ensure a smooth unloading process, all without complex engineering of each process step. Each autonomous unit offers a set of skills. For the execution of a skill, workflows are generated on the fly by considering the environment and the given process goal. 
A variety of AI technologies are used to solve complex tasks, such as the unloading of a pallet in an automated way. All automated processes are continually monitored by certified advanced safety concepts for human-machine interaction. In rapidly changing environments, self-adapting safety functions are crucial to produce efficiently and, more importantly, safely. As customized products require individual manufacturing solutions, additive manufacturing allows for completely new shapes and forms, hardly possible in conventional production. In our self-organizing production, autonomous units exchange information about their environment to collaborate in the real world. If a production step cannot be performed by a single production unit, the intelligent production system divides the process into subclasses. Then it assigns production modules to them, even considering tool changes and transportation times. For even higher efficiency, a combination of flexible grasping and visual detection facilitates the handling of previously unknown parts. However, even a robust AI application can have its difficulties when minor differences are barely visible due to an unfavorable perspective. Whenever an AI system reaches its limits, it must be able to ask for human assistance. Based on human feedback, the system learns and improves continuously. The autonomous factory is more than just a vision. We at Siemens already support and experiment together with our customers to transform their production so that individual ideas can be brought to life. And RoboStar can win a small heart by storm. Okay, uh, isn't it interesting? Yeah, this is uh, what will be happening in Industry 5.0, where the products will be more customized for individuals. Uh, so yeah, when talking about some AI use cases as shown in that video, uh, in future, actually, in uh, it would be a current trend also. Uh, so manufacturing in AI can be used in demand planning like applications where the data can be used and the data can be used to identify patterns and then make decisions accordingly on how the demand would be in next five days or next month likewise. And then AI can be used in product developments and research and development tasks. And also AI can be used in quality control techniques where the image-based and sensor-based processes can be used to uh, detect anomalies and detect defects within uh, parts of production lines. And then AI can be used in process controls uh, where uh, the techniques like uh, a sequential uh, decision-making and uh, anomaly detection also can be used in controlling the process workflows. And then uh, AI can be used in the production uh, where streaming applications uh, can be used to uh, measure and detect uh, the throughput of any uh, process. And then inventory management also can be enhanced and improved by using AI uh, where we can plan ahead and uh, the, the stock outs and the unsequential, that means unpredictable events can be monitored and uh, mitigated using AI. And then AI also can be used in maintenance techniques and safety applications for the employees working. And also we can use AI to manage energy and the resources also. So 
So what are the benefits of using AI in manufacturing? As I earlier talked about, it can be used to improve efficiency and productivity and enhance quality control and techniques like defect detection can be used and also the predictive maintenance and also it can reduce the downtime in the assembly lines. And as shown in the video, AI also would be used in customization and personalization of products in the future. So these are some of the top companies using AI in manufacturing like Siemens, IBM, Intel, NVIDIA likewise. So uh, what do you think are the future trends in AI in manufacturing? You guys have any ideas? Sorry? Yeah. Yeah. Any application to you know? Yes. Uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, there are techniques like uh, AR and VR that we can use. Give you that some techniques where I have found some. These are these can be some future trends in manufacturing, like applications like additive manufacturing. That means uh, you guys have heard about three D printing, right? Yeah. And also our Magna Center also have that three uh, D printing capability where the rocket parts can be printed using those machineries, and then five uh, G like techniques and also more advanced IOTs and immersive technologies like AR and VR uh, can be future trends. And also uh, there are many smart wearable applications that you also would have known like uh, exoskeletons. That means uh, in some factories, they, they can produce some safety applications for employees who are working in critical manufacturing companies to ensure their safety inside the a company, the manufacturing centers, and also drones also can be future trends, right? And yeah, the blockchain technologies also are future trends. Yeah, that's uh, all I have. So, Ruan, if you have anything. So we just about in collaboration, we stand with the uh, Magna Center, the Institute, and the, the AI Institute at Ben McNair Aerospace Center at the University of South Carolina and Fraunhofer USA have partnered to develop an assistant for BMW's material planners. The proposed solution captures, analyzes, and exploits rich BMW data sets to enable optimized and proactive materials controls optimize specialized human expertise and reduce line 
stoppages due to missing parts at BMW. Relevant recommendations and potential challenges are communicated to material planners through an interactive dashboard. The following video tutorial demonstrates the basic functionality and different widgets of this dashboard. If you have any questions or feedback when watching this video or using the dashboard, please send them to the project team at riamatthews at sc.edu. The dashboard has views for four material planner IDs that represent a subset of the overall material planners. In the future, the number of possible logins can be increased to accommodate more planners. The different usernames correspond to the planner IDs, which are 114, 594, M11, and 177. In this demo, the passwords for each account are identical to the usernames for simplicity. By having a login page, the material planner has a personalized view of materials that they are responsible to manage at BMW. After logging in, the material planner is shown a health score and summary screen for their respective material IDs. The health score widget tabularizes the material IDs and gives a health percentage from 0 to 100 for each one, with 100 being most optimal. The material planner can obtain the contributing factors of a specific health score by clicking the Show Analysis button. Once clicked, two charts provide information about the available quantity for the next 10 days with respect to safety stock. For example, a material with a low health score could indicate that the material availability is low with respect to safety stock. Closing these charts and moving to the Part Detailed Description widget at the bottom allows a material planner to see more granular information for each material, such as safety stock, plant, and lot size. The material planner can have a detailed view of exceptions of each material by navigating to the exception tab on the left-hand side of the dashboard. Clicking the exception tab brings up two additional widgets. Analyzing them allows for material planners to see what the leading cause of exceptions are and which materials are responsible for those exceptions. The top widget is an exception manager, which is time-based and provides a graphical summary of the exceptions for all material IDs in the past 60 days. The second widget is materials-based, which summarizes the exceptions for each material. Moving to the part ranking tab, Using the left-hand side of the dashboard, the material planner can see forecasted arrival probabilities for specific materials. Material IDs are selected using the drop-down menu in the top right-hand corner. The top widget presents a long-run approach, which provides a percentage for the material being early, on time, or late based on the performance of a given part in the past. The second widget presents a Markov chain approach, for when the material planner needs more granular information about how early or late a material order may be based on the status of the latest delivery. This approach uses historical data to calculate how a part has performed in the past and predict how it might behave in the future based only on their current status. Percentages are given for increments of one day ranging from negative three to positive three. For example, if the Markov chain shows 8% for negative three, that represents the probability for a part being three days early is 8%. The final tab in the navigation bar is the recommendation engine. The recommendation engine implements decision rules elicited from material planners. The current rule set recognizes situations where expedited orders need to be made, where certain exceptions can be ignored, or where the recommendation engine will defer to the judgment of the planner. The recommendation engine may also determine that a part has no issues to be resolved. For example, one rule in the decision engine is a zero out exception 15. This rule is triggered when an exception 15 is found on a scheduled agreement for a part. The rule states that if there are future dependent requirements where the receipt requirement is less than the available inventory plus the exception quantity, then the recommendation engine would propose zeroing out the receipt requirement of the scheduled agreement having the exception. To use the recommendation engine, a material planner selects a material ID with the drop-down menu and submits a request. The system provides a recommendation that can be accepted or rejected, and the planner can provide a rationale for that rejection using the input box below. Finally, the planner can log out of the dashboard using the last tab on the navigation pane. 
During this phase of testing, the University of South Carolina and Fraunhofer teams are actively seeking feedback on the widgets and charts used to present information in the dashboard. Additionally, the development teams want to hear from you on ways to make the dashboard more user -friendly. Maybe it gives you kind of an example here, um, uh, uh, the application supply chain. Uh, so there are many, many uses within the manufacturing uh, industry for AI, and this was supply chain. This other is production and so many other things. Yeah, if you have any questions or any ideas, you can speak. So, so uh, I mean, they say um, what what you saw physically here in the field is uh, you know um, a new generation of planning which is uh, programmed. Oh no, I thought my yeah. I was talking about uh, this is the next one. Yeah. We're talking um communication and that thing like more than the box and the quality. Yes, yes, yes. And box and then the yeah. So I wonder if it's something that we're going to be able to do this. And now we can do that. So we can do that. And we can do that. So we can combine that with the system and try to just keep them away from the lab. So we can walk into the room and get the same thing. I guess the new generation of planning is the adoption of the fact that there is a new happening. Train and model by by just instructing who to take out that we should take. But now we can increase off more uh, chemicals like cameras, views, light sensors. We would know to do more of the specific environment. So if we have, let's say, a uh, supervisor, you know, showing some of this research and doing some of this safe then the model should be able to automatically adapt. Basically, using more advanced reinforcement learning. Uh, and the, the old rule based algorithms that we have used in the past time, we can certainly uh, see the future that you know, our humans will be struck. So the models we have to automatically adapt to those the new you know, uh, instructions. Yeah. So you can go to the other side of 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 if the dog gives a good thing, that we have a good thing, we give it. So it's the same thing with reinforcement learning. So uh, if we surpass our expectation, then the reward that we give would be proportional to the, uh, you know, uh, the good thing that the model gives. Yeah. So basically, uh, it's not a you know, binary, like one of the So yeah. if we did a good thing, I will see one. The bad thing is zero. You can actually have a scale from zero to one. So it's a class of algorithm called reinforcement learning. Mm -hmm. So you know, there is the reward for doing it. Like, they, 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 they
in green resource model, we have the same goal of exploration and exploitation. Mm -hmm. So basically, we can do absolutely like the, we could not restrict the, the robot to uh, just follow one line, uh, one in one line of the uh, split. We have to uh, encourage the robot uh, to do exploration by also learning what are the uh, two good actions. Okay, so that's why you would uh, give certain uh, degree of freedom. So you could actually make some mistakes on the way, like you learn something. So you don't know who you are, how you get it. One of the interesting things that we are working on now is uh, first detecting in where did the impact occurs so when you are planning for your know, interesting process if an um, unexpected event occurs and you stop your interaction or you slow down or whatever you do then uh, understand what led to that error and then replan okay. to uh, try out uh, an alternate uh, plan that does not uh, you know lead to that kind of issue okay. So that's another thing that that's actually the flexibility. Yeah. So, yeah, so thank you for talking to you today. So, is there a situation where AI has been like they didn't really have a whole bunch of people that were in the country? Then something happened and they were kind of the lot to follow during that week's block. We already know that it was the week's block. Right. 